Whilst most people probably couldn't justify building a full-scale self-contained crystal testing thing with all the facilities to measure frequencies etc, there's no doubt that if you buy a whole collection like this, which we have bought several job lots, um, at some point one has to test them and it's probably a good idea then to knock up a simple crystal testing device in order to do so. I mean these in particular were interesting to us, these little ones in these B7G holder type things, they look like little valves but they're not, they're crystals. And we really need to test, there's about 50 of those needing testing and what better way to do it other than to build a very simple crystal testing thing in order to do so. This is the radar room simple crystal tester circuit and this is what we'll be building here. It's very simple as you can see there are about two resistors and a capacitor in it. <laughs> Interesting enough the capacitor is optional, you don't have to put it in because it's only used if we're going to connect a scope up to it to check the waveform coming from the valve. So really it's just two resistors, that's all we need along with what is already on the chassis. And this of course being the same universal chassis as we've used for other projects. Um, Interesting enough, going back to the valve, this is something you don't usually use for a crystal oscillator. Uh, it's a VT52, it's a little bit obscure in some some ways, um, but uh, it's uh, an output pentode. So what we'll probably be doing later on is we'll be using this one as well. We'll slightly change the wiring connections to the bottom of the valve holder and use an EBC33. This is a triode with two diodes in it, double diode triode. Um, which is quite different to the VT52. So we'll prove that this should work just as well if you happen to have one of these to spare um, for doing our crystal work. Um, that's about all to say for this. Well, we're going to make it up and we'll demonstrate it working. But bear in mind with this very simple circuit, I don't think there's a simpler circuit for a crystal oscillator with a valve. Um, we'll be able to see it working as a self-contained unit we do not need to connect a scope up to it to see whether or not the crystal is working. Okay let's let's move on to make the project and then see what it looks like. Here is our completed circuit for the crystal tester on our universal chassis. Nothing much to see as per usual you can see the VT52 has its clip on the top it's in position so um, that's about all there is to see on that. A little bit more to see on the inside you notice that we have put a B7G valve holder in here. This is not for valves, but for our great pile of uh, B7G glass enclosed crystals, which we want to test. Uh, we recently acquired them and want to know if they work. So what better time to do it than to fit that into this chassis and test them all now. Once again, very little to see on the underside, except the addition of our B7G valve holder, which we'll be using to put the crystals in. One of the resistors there, the other resistors on the other side. Very few components, but a very useful little circuit. So, let us go ahead and test one or two of these um, crystals. We have a box full of the fellas and thought we may as well start somewhere. This particular one is a standard radio quartz plate. Uh, it says it's the frequency is 16.225 megahertz. So if we pop that in there, it's a bit of a squeeze putting them in. it's in. Okay, so if we tune the thing in here, let's wait for the current to be drawn. There we go. So it's around about the 5 milliamp mark. That's what we expected. So that's saying that the valve is not oscillating. So if we reduce the capacity of the front panel capacitor, which remember is across the 47k ohm resistor, uh, goes across between the top cap and the ground essentially. If we reduce that to nil, click jump, that means straight away it's now oscillating. Yeah, it's oscillating very strongly, so there's no capacity across it. Increase the capacitance and it stops oscillating. So I think we can be pretty sure that that one is a working crystal. We can obviously put an oscilloscope across our 2.2 picofarad capacitor on the anode and we could actually measure that or check it by the frequency meter or whatever we choose. Okay, so if we put that back as it was 
and turn it off we'll try another one try something else at the other end of the scale that would be useful to check it works so once again that one was 16.225 megahertz uh, this one here is a lot lower this is 4.531 megahertz so we'll check that the oscillator works down at that that frequency so 4.5 let's turn it we're slugged again on that one and let's put this on about 5 milliamps suggesting that it's not oscillating so if we reduce that capacitor oh yeah it's going that's quite a drop down to under 3 milliamps now so I would suggest that that one is working fi fine as well. The thing to remember is if the crystal is not oscillating this capacitor here will have absolutely no effect whatsoever so the current will remain exactly the same and this will have no effect on it. The only way which this capacitor here can have an effect is if the valve is oscillating and this stops it oscillating. That's the best way to look at it. So you don't need another meter, you don't need an indicator, you don't need an oscilloscope. Obviously hanging an oscilloscope on allows you to see what's going on, but the oscilloscope will only tell you, you know, that yes, you're right, it's it's the meter's correct. Um, so in other words, if you build this, you don't need a scope to make it work. We know that by using this control, that will tell you whether your crystal works or not. As we have an oscilloscope to hand, it seems a pity not to demonstrate it working with our crystal tester. We're not using one of the radar room's original World War II scopes, test sets, because none of them are particularly happy running like this in this configuration with about 15 megs. So we decided to use a modern scope to show it. Uh, not a very fast scope, it's only 20 megahertz, but it's, it's good enough for us. Now we have here a different one with a different label on it. This one is 15.21 25 megahertz we'll pop that in the holder and we'll be able to see it working and what happens when we operate the control so we need to put that in first there you go she's mm -hmm. gone in so all we do now is make sure that is slugged it shouldn't oscillate so wait for the current to come up Okay, just under 5 milliamps, just over 5 milliamps. The scope is reading nothing because the capacitor is basically stopping the, the crystal from oscillating. So if we now reduce the value of that capacitor, first signs of that crystal working, and it's only just under 5 milliamps on the meter. So if we turn it further, the current, the current drops more, and we notice that the scope trace is growing. That's as far as it'll go. So that's around about 3 milliamps. And that's the trace on the scope. This is uh, the horizontal deflection is 100 nanoseconds per division, which means very roughly we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Round about 15 meg. In fact, slightly over 15 meg, which is actually what it should be. So there we go. As a finishing thought here, we've taken out the VT52 because it's a bit of an unusual valve and made a small change to the wiring of the socket. We're going to use an EBC33. This is actually a triode, or actually a double diode triode, um, just to show how that being an output pento, this is a double diode triode. You can probably use pretty much any valve you like in here. So if I pop that in, so we've made, there's only two wires were added. And that's to take the two diodes down to ground because we're not using those clip the top cap on we've installed a, another crystal this time it's a 14.137.5 uh, megahertz crystal so we turn that on and let's see what happens when it comes up we have the scope connected again but uh, this one oh here we come now remember we were having five milliamps through there this is only going okay I'm going to two but the scope has come up which is showing it's oscillating so if we see what's the minimum that's it slug completely with that capacitor and it's reading 
about two and a half nearly well about 2.6 milliamps uh, that's it so if we take the capacitor off the trace comes up and that is how big it goes and we're drawing about one and a half milliamps so there we go that's using a completely different valve that's your triode compared to the output pentode the VT52 hope this has been of some interest it's certainly a useful little circuit if you want to build up you know something like this for use for checking a lot of crystals like we have a lot of crystals we're going to check them out with this now thanks for watching um, we'll hopefully be putting another couple of videos up in the next few days thank you